Quick, which one of these is a 2K clear coat? Which one of these is a water-based clear coat? What about now, stacked right on top of each other? Can you tell the difference? They're both glossy. They're both durable. And they're both pretty scratch resistant. So you just have to keep watching if you want to find out. Maybe I will tell you, maybe I won't. Or maybe I'll wait for you guys to leave comments down below and tell me which one you think is which. Today, we are going to be talking about a brand new product from Createx, which is the 4053 4053 High Gloss, which is differentiated from the old 4050 Gloss. And I have confirmed this is glossier. So I've always known, or known ever since the product has come out, you could always take the 4050 High Gloss and you could buff that out into a pretty, really good shine. Um, and I've known for some time that I could get a good finish with one of these, which is what I've painted those speech shapes with. And I know that I can get a good finish with one of these, which you, if you saw Chris Arpin's video and saw the hockey puck he did with this, then you know we're straight out of spray gun. Today, I'm gonna run it through its paces with an airbrush a little bit and discuss what maybe modelers would like about this product. Now, I'm not much of a modeler, but this is a body of a scale car. And I went ahead and painted that up in the high gloss today. And I will tell you, the rating on this, you know, surface like this, this is something you wouldn't want to have to buff. So I wanted to see what kind of shine we can get that out of an airbrush right on this surface. And I'm pretty darn pleased with that, considering this is a really rough scale. So today I used my airbrush and I painted up some spoons on top of painting up that model body and some other things. This is iridescent green from the regular Createx line on a black surface. This is iridescent fuchsia on a black surface, which is from the regular Createx line, the iridescent fuchsia, so the cheaper paints uh, with the UVLS high gloss over it. And this is iridescent fuchsia over a green spoon, as you can tell. Now, what about black? We all know black shows everything wrong. Well, what do you think about that finish? Straight out of the airbrush, no buffing, no polishing, no sanding it down and then recoating it, low coating it right. So the tech sheets, which are already out, say that you should put down three coats, sand it, and put down another three coats for the best finish. And I'll probably do that at some point, but I was able to get these for finishes straight off of an airbrush. So let me go into how I mix and how I spray. That's going to help you get the same finish that I was able to get with these. Okay, first off, you are going to want to mix this about 20% of your 4011 reducer mixed in with the UVLS high gloss, and you're going to want to let it set and get acclimatized with itself. Notice how that's drizzling off the stick. You want this to be pretty wet because you're going to want to spray at low pressures. Full disclaimer, Createx sent this to me, and so I received these products free so anytime you do that by law i'm supposed to put a disclaimer on that even though they didn't ask me to do a, a video on it they didn't want me to test on the, some of these so they also sent me this wicked gloss black and that is one of the bodies i'm painting up with a wicked gloss black that has not got a clear coat on it and of course you may have seen some of the other products that they sent in this last release which has been a huge release with the blur colors and everything else but let's get back. so you're going to want to spray this a little bit wet actually when i picked that up it already had one coat on it believe it or not that was dry and as you can tell there's a lot of um you know problems with the finish below it below the surface so i am not starting with a really good clean slate but as you watch as I'm painting this, you're going to notice I'm getting it a wet finish with an overlap. You do not want it to get milky. So it's going to start to take on just a little tint of that blue haze, but you really don't want to get all the way into that milky level. And you want it to stay wet. You've got to keep the edge wet, and that's very important. And I'm going to move over to spoon so you can see that a little bit better. All right, as we get into the spoons, you're gonna watch how I lay that out, keeping that wet edge. It'll be a little bit easier to see, although I am not the greatest videographer and was not able to keep my camera in frame. It's kind of hard to paint and watch your camera to see if you're in frame sometimes. But as you notice, each time I'm laying it out with a nice wet edge like that, and I am not letting it milk up. I also found that it is much preferable to keep this at low pressures, which is why we want that thin. So you do not want a whole lot of air pushing around the finish 
after you have been laying paint on it, it'll tend to start to either dry spray or it will start pushing the paint and you'll get a lot of orange peel. So you wanna push it at low pressures. I was probably spraying this at about 18 to 20 PSI with a Badger Omni airbrush. So back to the original question, which one's which? And the answer is gonna be, and I'm not gonna answer that just yet. So the question now becomes, will these replace 2K clear cut? Well, no, not in all cases at least. Createx has never even pretended that these are automotive grade. You would not wanna paint these on an automotive surface just simply because they won't have the same kind of chemical resistance that you would get automotively. And there is just a slight little bit of difference in the clarity of the finish, not a lot. Now, no question about it, an experienced painter with really good paint and really knows how to do use a spray gun is going to be able to get the most best finish for custom automotive work. So where am I going to incorporate this? Well, I'm going to incorporate this in some of my panels, some of the metal panels that I do. I can get a really, really good finish with this, and which is plenty durable for sign work for inside. It's got water resistance. You can splash water all over these after they've cured out for a few days and it's not going to hurt a thing. Um, and I'm going to use these on little, you know, smaller items like that. Christmas ornaments are going to be a big thing that I'm going to be using these for because that means I'm not going to have to deal with the weather outside. I'll be able to paint that in my studio. For those of you who do not have any access to 2K paints or a place to spray paint that can keep the fumes out of your house, that's gonna be a great product. As a matter of fact, the gloss on this is better than the gloss you're gonna get out of, say, a Rust-Oleum spray paint in a can. It's actually a better clarity of finish. So what do I think? I'm, I'm very pleased. I am very pleased with the 4053 high gloss. The upgrade from the 4050 is significant enough that I will be using a lot more of this product where I didn't use a whole lot of 4050. So, because I didn't want to have to deal with buffing and, you know, sanding the finish out. So, anyway, guys, the question still is unanswered. Which one of those is going to be the 2K? Which one of those is going to be the 4053? So, you guys got to leave the comments down below and make your guesses. I want to see what you guys think, and I'm going to watch that for a few days, and I hope I get a lot of guesses on it. But that's going to wrap us up for today. I'm Bill Kennedy with the Airspace. If you didn't know, remember to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. I got a lot more content coming up in the very near future. I appreciate y'all stopping by. Y'all have a good one. Bye. And let's just go ahead and delete that because that sucks.